From Caterpillars to Butterflies, episode 19, How to Manifest Your Heart's Desires. Welcome to the From Caterpillars to Butterflies Personal Growth Podcast. Just like the caterpillar is destined to become a butterfly, you too are designed for a beautiful transformation. This is where you go to grow and transform your life. And now, here's your host, certified life coach, Charlene Dior. Hey, hey, this is Charlene, your host of the From Caterpillars to Butterflies Personal Growth Podcast, where we talk about all things personal growth. If it can help you grow, we will likely be covering it right here. And today we're talking about manifesting. We're talking about how to manifest your heart's desires. Look, I want to manifest things, okay? I want to manifest love and happiness and wealth and experiences and travel and all these great, wonderful things. And, you know, I, I've watched The Secret and I was learning about law of attraction and these things kind of piqued my interest. I was thinking, okay, okay, how do I do this? I hear you, but how do I do this? So I started trying to learn how to manifest my heart's desires. What I thought manifesting meant was that things would just kind of show up. That if I had the right frequency, the right vibration, and the right desire, then things would just start to show up in my life out of nowhere. I thought that that's what manifesting meant. And I was taught to manifest things um, by journaling. I bought a product, a digital product. It was $10, wasn't a ton of money on manifesting. It was supposed to show me how to manifest something into my life in 10 days. And it was a journaling exercise. So it was, it was really journaling for 10 days in order to manifest something. I was taught that about creative visualization, you know, that thoughts become things. So you have to think and imagine and see yourself and your future state and whatever that you want to manifest, you, you see it and you think about it and you affirm it because thoughts become things. I was told to ask the universe and then feel the feelings, act as if, get that burning desire. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. And that's what a lot of people who, who teach manifesting or, or law of attraction tell you. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. So you just ask God and then you feel it and start acting as if. Um, brainstorming. I was taught to manifest by brainstorming. So years ago, I went to a conference with a coach that I highly, highly respect. And um, the second day, there was a bonus session on manifesting. And I'm tired because the bonus session was at 7 p.m. I'm an introvert. I'm ready to go back to my hotel room. But I really want to figure out this manifesting thing. So I just forced myself to stay, to figure, to, to listen, to learn how to manifest. And the coach is on stage with a flip chart or, or easel pad. And she's teaching us how to manifest money. Here's how you manifest money. And she starts writing on the flip chart. And she writes 401k credit cards, friends and family, savings. And to me, that was an exercise in finding money, not manifesting it. Because remember, I said that I think manifesting means, I thought manifesting meant that things would just show up. Okay. So you teaching me how to identify what I already have is not manifesting what I already have access to or what's already in my reach. It's not manifesting, it's finding. So I was taught to manifest things um, by brainstorming. <laughs> so those are some of the ways that I was taught to manifest. But I'm going to tell you that those things didn't really sit right with me. And, you know, again, I've bought products, I've read books, I've read popular books by popular art um, authors. And I just couldn't get there. It just didn't feel right to me. 
thoughts become things doesn't feel right to me. Like, thank God that my thoughts do not all become things because my thoughts are crazy sometimes. I am a self-professed worry wart. Um, I saw this quote that said, 97% of things that we worry about don't even happen. Thank God they don't happen. Thank God my thoughts do not become things all on their own. And when I think about manifesting and I think about that quote, thoughts become things, the reason why it wasn't feeling right to me is because, look, I've thought about a lot of things. When I was a kid, a young girl, I used to love mace. You know, mace, cute mace with the dimples. Girl, I could tell you was meant for me. I could tell by the way you were sent to me, right? Harlem on the rise. Come on, come on, come on. I love me, Mace. I had a poster of Mace on my wall, a giant size poster of Mace on my wall. I thought about that man. I visualized being with him. I kissed him on the lips on the poster. Okay, for years, I was obsessed with Mace and he was my boyfriend in my head for years. Those thoughts did not become things. I have never even met the man. And I think that we can all think of times where our thoughts, where our fantasies, where our expectations, they just weren't met. So for someone to say that thoughts become things, and I could think of all these times where my thoughts didn't become things, I just can't believe that that's the way to manifest. That doesn't feel right to me because I have so many proof points in my life. You know, I, I was working at a job that I hated and I went home and updated my resume. I was applying to places like gangbusters, right? I wrote my resignation letter, okay? If that's not acting as if, come on now, I wrote my resignation letter. I didn't get to, I didn't go anywhere. I was there for another three years before I left. My thoughts didn't become things. My acting as if didn't become things. There was one employer in particular that I wanted to work for. And I was on their website buying. I wasn't really buying them, but, you know, looking at their their company shirts and like, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy this shirt. I'm going to buy this backpack. This is going to be my lunch pail. You know, I was like really like acting as if I was like five seconds away from ordering. But I want the company discount. <laughs> And I interviewed with them. I interviewed with, with them for two positions. The first time I went through three rounds of interviews and didn't get it. And the second time I ran, I went through two rounds of interviews and I didn't get it. And that was years ago. I've never worked with them before. So even though I was acting as if, even though I had the thoughts, even though I was even applying, to be honest, I still didn't get there. So acting as if and thoughts just didn't feel right to me either manifesting what I already have within my reach, within my 401k, within my savings account, that doesn't feel like manifesting to me either. So I wasn't feeling that one either. And then ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. I have a problem with this as a Christian. I have a problem to say that you manifest things by asking and receiving and knowing the secret. Like the Bible does not say that you have to know the secret in order for your prayers to be answered. The Bible doesn't say ask and receive if you know how to visualize. The Bible says ask and you shall receive. And if you don't receive, it is because you have asked amiss. It's not because you did not know something. You know, I I, I have a problem with believing if, if you believe in the Bible and that it is the, the truth and it's the one book that you need, but then there's this other secret. I don't want to say secret in the sense of the movie, The Secret, but there's this other thing over here that if you don't know this plus the Bible, then you can't manifest. No, if God wanted us to know something, it would have been in the Bible. So for that fundamental reason, I have a problem with asking you shall receive as long as you know the quote unquote secret or as long as you know how to get your frequency up. I have a problem with that. So all of the things that I was learning about manifesting and the lessons and, and the, you know, just everything, it didn't really sit right with me. 
So I want to manifest things. I want to create what I want to create, but these things aren't really settling right with me. So I've done a lot of thinking about this. I've done a lot of thinking and reflecting on manifesting. Here's what manifest actually means per the dictionary. It means readily perceived by the senses and especially by the sense of sight. So seeing something can be manifesting. Easily understood or recognized by the mind, obvious. Okay, those are two definitions of the word manifest. But what I prefer to use is create. Manifest implies that you are in a reactive, sedentary role in your life's unfolding. Creating means that you're in the driver's seat. You're being proactive and you're moving. To me, manifest just means things just show up. But creating means that I go get them. So I prefer to use the word create. But here's what I tell people in terms of manifesting their heart's desires. I wrote a blog post about this, about manifesting unlimited opportunities. I had an opportunity to speak at a local women's organization here in Houston. It was a great experience. I got a love offering at the end of it. So I guess it was my first quote unquote paid speaking gig. Um, I had an opportunity to go to Haiti, to go on a mission trip to Haiti and to visit orphanages and spend time with kids and teach them about Jesus. I just interviewed last weekend to go on a mission trip to Columbia this week with my church, I mean, this year with my church. So if you are a praying person, pray that I would be chosen and have favor. You know, I've, I've invested in real estate. I own multiple properties. I've traveled the world. I've been to North America, well, of course, North America, South America, and Europe and Asia and went to Niagara Falls. And I've traveled, you know, to Paris and London and Amsterdam and Trinidad and Tobago and Rome. And, you know, um, I have a book on Amazon on my experiences of investing in real estate. I've gone to see a lot of great speakers, people that I really admire uh, in this industry. Rosetta Thurman and uh, Jack Canfield and Tony Robbins and Mary Morrissey and Tony Gaskins. And I had the opportunity to have pictures with these nice, famous millionaires. <laughs> um you know, I've just had the opportunity to eat at really great restaurants. I love experiencing new things. So a nice dining experience is a great thing for me. Um, so I've had a lot of quote unquote opportunities that I have quote unquote manifested. But here's what I believe about manifesting, whatever it is that you want. So I've named some things that are really near and dear to me. There are things that I believe in, traveling and missionary groups and, and real estate investing. Those might not be your things, but here's how it manifested those things. Here's what I believe it is. I found them. No one came to me and said, hey, Charlene, come speak at our organization. No one said, hey, Charlene, let's go to Haiti. No one said, hey, Charlene, let's go to London. I went to London and Paris my first two trips out of the country as an adult, London and then Paris, and I went by myself because I didn't have anyone else to go with me. I couldn't manifest a travel buddy. <laughs> um, but I found these opportunities. I found the Houston's women's group and I sent them an email. They had a call for speakers and I sent them an email. I found the trip to Haiti on my church's website. And I found the opportunities to go to Rosetta's event and Jack Canfield's event and Mary Morty's event. And then I paid for them. I found my opportunities and then I funded them. That's what I have now learned to believe manifesting is. It is finding your own opportunities. It is finding your own chances and funding them if you have to. It is learning. When I first learned how to, um, well, when I first wanted to learn about real estate investing, I went to the same event multiple times because it was free. 
I joined three different organizations about real estate investing in Houston. And I used to go to the bookstore after work and take notes. I'd, I'd read books and take notes. I didn't want to buy all the books. <laughs> uh, so I bought some and then some I just took notes out of. And I did that for, you know, weeks. And sure enough, in due time, I was able to buy my first property. But it wasn't because it fell in my lap. It wasn't because I sat at home visualizing it and dreaming it. It was because I was learning and I was persisting and I was studying and I was taking action. And then I had to pay for the houses too, okay? <laughs> no one gave me the money for the houses. I had to pay for the houses too. So to me, manifesting is creating. And the way that you create is that you find, you fund, you learn, you persist, you take action and you have a spirit of discipline and consistency. That is how you manifest your heart's desires. You just don't give up. And if everything else doesn't work, the visualization, the journaling, the brainstorming, these things I think will serve you well in whatever it is that you want. And I am not, I'm a believer in journaling. I'm a believer in affirmations. I'm a believer in visualizing. A lot of times at the end of the episodes, there's a creative visual, uh, a guided visualization or meditation. I believe in those things, but I believe that those are tools to help you keep your vision front and center, to help you remember what you want, even when you're tired or even when it's so far away that it feels like it won't matter if you set today out or if you take a break or take a week off because what's one day or one week or a few months going to hurt in the grand scheme of thing if, if it's so far away. You know, that's the same thing with with brainstorming. Brainstorming is a great tool to help you stretch your imagination to remove perceived obstacles that really aren't real to explore new options and avenues to actually make the progress that you want to make. I totally believe in those tools. Those tools help you get clear on what you want and remember what you want so that you can stay consistent. But I don't think those tools help you get what you want absent of action. The Bible even says faith without works is dead. So I don't want you to take away me saying that I don't believe in journaling or meditation or creative visualization. I do. I just believe that they're supplementary tools. They're not the main tool. The main tool, I think, is you taking it, taking action and not being afraid to go and even find things to begin with, find opportunities to begin with and not being afraid to pay for them. Like that's what I think it takes. What I wanted to just also talk about a little bit is the power of synchronicity. So a lot of times when people talk about manifesting, they'll use the example that, you know, have you ever been thinking about your friend or family member and then all of a sudden the phone rings and it's them? So in what they're saying is that you've manifested that experience because you were thinking about it. But I don't think that's manifesting. I think that is the power of synchronicity. And I think that spiritually, you know, I think that we are a spirit, a mind, and a body. So you have a spirit man, you have your mind, which is your conscious and subconscious mind, and then you have your the physical body. And so I think that sometimes our spirit man knows something that our conscious mind doesn't yet know. So years ago, it was around Thanksgiving, I think. I went to my mother's house. So I parked the car and I walk up to the door and I sensed my brother who lives in Louisiana. So I knew in my spirit that he was there. I didn't know in my conscious mind, like, oh, Maurice is here, let me go say hi. No, in my spirit, I sensed that he was there. And then I opened the door and he was there. My stepdad had went to go pick him up as a surprise to us. So I knew that he was there before I knew that he was there. My spirit knew that he was there before my conscious knew that he was there. So when I saw him, I wasn't surprised because I knew. I didn't know on a conscious level where I could think, oh, he's here, let me go say hi. But I knew enough that I wasn't surprised 
My spirit knew, if that makes sense. So some people would say, oh, well, you manifested him. No, I didn't. He was already there. Like I live in Texas and he lives in Louisiana. I did not just poof and make him there. He was already there. But my spirit knew first. You understand? Another example, years ago, I was driving in my car. So I'm on a three lane street. The left lane turns left only on a one way street. The middle lane turns left or goes straight. And then the right lane turns, goes right or goes straight. So I am in the first far left lane. There's a car in front of me, but there's no car in the second lane. So I think I'm going to go get in the second lane. And something told me not to. Something said, don't get over there. Right? You ever had that something told me experience? But my conscious mind questioned it. My conscious mind said, why not? Ain't nobody over there. So what did I do? I went and got in the second lane. Again, the far left lane is turn left only. The middle lane that I am now in is turn left or go straight. I want to turn left. The, the car that was next to me in the lane next to me, she turns left, but she doesn't follow the lines. You know how when you're turning, they have the dotted lines to show you the path that you should take. She crosses over the dotted line and she hits me. So I get hit <laughs> and she said it was my fault. And she told the insurance company that I ran the red light. Um, so I didn't, I didn't get my car fixed, but neither did she. So I'm fine with that. But something told me. So there's a knowing in our spirit sometimes that we don't listen to. And a part of it is because we're groomed and taught from a young age how to use our critical mind. We're taught how to deduce and analyze and count and take tests. We're taught how to think, but we're not taught how to nurture our spirit mind or our subconscious mind. So a lot of times when our spirit has some information for us, we start analyzing it and questioning it and we don't see physical manifestations, quote unquote, of the issue, right? I don't see any reason why I don't need to be in that second lane. So I'm going to go ahead and get over there. But our spirit does know something that our mind doesn't know at times. And we, we might call that manifesting, but I think it's more so along the lines of a knowing, a spiritual awareness and knowing or a synchronicity rather than a manifestation of something happening. This happened to me recently. So I have been trying to manifest love, guys. I'm really happy with life. I just really want a partner too. So this year I decided that I was going to take this into my own hands and, uh, you know, find a man. So I've been doing the online dating thing and the online dating thing is a mess. <laughs> So I was thinking about um, doing a blog post or a podcast episode on the craziness of online dating. And so I was kind of thinking through that content and this guy came to mind to me. Um, so years ago, I met a guy at Target and we exchanged numbers. And then after that, every morning he would text me and say, good morning, sunshine. Good morning, sunshine. And at first that was kind of cute. Okay. But then after a while, it was getting a little annoying. Like, okay, that's enough. I, I actually had to tell him to stop texting me because he would just say, good morning, sunshine. And I would say, Hey, how's it going? And he would say, good. And then eventually I would be like, okay, so are we going to meet? Are we going to go out on a date? And he would say, yeah, where do you, when are you free? And I would give him my time. And then that would be the end of the conversation. And then the next day he would say, hi, good morning, sunshine. So I literally had to say, can you please stop texting me? And so when I was thinking about this content of this, my online dating and just how men are just weird sometimes, he came to mind. And then last Sunday I left church and I looked at my phone and I had a text message and I didn't have the number saved in my phone. And it says, um, hey, Charlene, how's it going? And so I said, Hey, I'm good. How are you? It's not completely unusual for me to not have a number saved in my phone. 
you know, because it's, it's easy to meet men. It's just that they fizzle out in a couple of days or a week or so. So I don't save numbers because I don't need a bunch of random dudes numbers in my phone. So it wasn't completely strange that I didn't know who it was. But anyway, so I'm like, okay. Um, so, so he says, long time, no talk. And I was like, yeah, it's been so long. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> and he says, oh, it's Michael, 6'6", six, six from Target on Main Street. He's thinking that I'm going to be impressed that he's 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Point of the story being is that um, he crossed my mind. And then shortly thereafter, he texted me. I crossed his mind. So do I think that I manifested him or do I think that there's just a little bit of a law of synchronicity that we're just being communicated with in our spirit and we're knowing things that we don't yet know consciously. And so I think that I I wouldn't call that manifesting. I wouldn't say that that's a proof point that you can manifest things because like I said earlier, we think about things all the time. I thought about Mace for years, guys years and I haven't met the man okay so (laughs) I am all about helping people to just really grow and to create the life that they want and I think part of that is just being empowered with the right information and knowledge and so that's a part of the reason why I kind of like to dispel some myths or even just give you a different perspective something else to think about so you know if you've been trying manifesting the other way the visualizing and frequency way and you really are still having trouble with it, then I, you know, I'd encourage you to start to take action, you know, and, and I teach my clients how to set goals and work towards them. I don't teach them manifesting. Manifesting is the buzzword right now, but when it really comes down to it, you're going to have to set some solid goals, put the right strategies in place, define the right tactics to help you accomplish those strategies and then just be consistent over time. That's how you manifest your heart's desires. That is how you do it. As always, I would love to hear from you. If you are a manifesting junkie and you can say you got some proof that you have manifested some specific things, then let me know. Let me know how you do that. Let me know what you think. I'm totally open to new perspectives and learning something new. So if you got it, let me know. And, um, you know, if you even want to come on the show and talk about it, that's also an option for you as well. So if you have a different perspective, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at Charlene, C-H-A-R-L-E-N-E at from caterpillars to butterflies.com. And with that, I want to just end with an announcement. So I have recently signed up for Patreon. And so Patreon is a community where you can support some of your content creators, some of your podcasters or other visual or um, auditory content creators. So, you know, there's, there's costs behind putting together a podcast. There's hosting costs. There's costs for an assistant like mine that helps me do the show notes. So, so supporting a podcast or other content creator that you really value and believe in can help them keep the show going, literally. So I would just like to extend an invitation to you if you have valued the content, if you like listening in, if you're learning some things that can help you improve your life, that I'd like to invite you to support me on Patreon. So you can give a love offering, which is a donation or offer of one dollar per month just to say thank you or i appreciate it uh, just a love offering or if you want to go deeper in the content you can sign up for different tiers of a reward so you know i'm i, I consider myself to be your virtual life coach <laughs> and you know a lot of my topics are around like real life things but it's great to listen to things sometimes you you need to go a little deeper and so the other options for you on Patreon, on my page on Patreon, is to go deeper with the content with worksheets and 
audio recordings, a lot of the times there is a meditation or, or guided visualization at the end of the podcast episode, which I know some people, they're driving, so they can't really participate. So one of the rewards for sponsoring at one of the higher reward levels is just getting that meditation download mp3 just the meditation by itself so that you can go back and listen to it set to music to help you get more into the spirit of it um so there'll be worksheets there's the meditations there's videos there's q a there's opportunity to help me create content for the the show so if you have questions or suggestions on topics you want me to cover you can really um let me know there and it's just an opportunity to interact with me personally. So the reward levels today, um, as it stands today, as of March 19th, um, is the $1 a month, just a love offering, less than a cup of coffee, depending on where you get your coffee from. Um, and then the other two reward levels are $5 and $10 monthly. And so that just whatever level you invest in depends on what you get. Um, but again, there's meditation audios, there's worksheets, there's deeper dives on the content just to help you go deeper. So if you want to give me a love offering, I would totally appreciate it and value your support. And if you want to go deeper, then that opportunity is for you as well. So I just wanted to extend that invitation to you if you want to support the show on Patreon. I will have a link for the show for the, the show on Patreon in the show notes. The URL is Patreon.